Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to my 5th Spring 2023 update from Gaz Weather. So here we go again, it's time to bring you another Spring update. And this week we're looking at some January data. Looking at January CT data. We will do England weather precipitation uh, data next week for the 6th uh, update. So uh, splitting up the uh, January data into uh, two weeks. And I shall get in on with that for you. In a moment, just say that the first BRC was our 6 a.m. upload. And uh, we've also got a 10 to 14 day account for you later on this afternoon as well. Please like, share, and subscribe on the video. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Thank you so much to Richard for the amazing spring 2023 updates gift. And of course, to uh, Jerry and also to Snowdrop. Uh, <laughs> Snowdrop, the uh, Snowdrop. The, uh, the doggy and uh, Jerry the lamb. Thank you so much to our double act. And uh, we've also got Bumble as well. Bumble the bee. Or bee Bumble. <laughs> Named by uh, Rich. Thank you so much, Richard, for our lovely spring updates gift. And thank you so much to Shryan as well for uh, getting the uh, years together uh, for us um, for this uh, update. So uh, hashtag Team Gal uh, working away uh, as usual to bring you uh, long-range content. So thank you so much to Shryan. Thank you so much to Richard. Um, right, okay, let's crack on then. So we're going to be uh, looking at January CT, as I say, for this uh, update. So January centering temperature came out at 5.2 uh, for 2023, which was 1.4 degrees above 61.99 average, which means that uh, for this update, we're go going to be looking at springs following uh, January's with a CT range of 4.8 to 5.6, sorted out for us by Shrine. So uh, let's have a look then. Starting uh, with the spring of 1957. Again, following January, CT range of 4.8, 5.6. This is a warm and dry spring. Uh, nice spring has above average heights, high pressure dominating to our north and towards Scandinavia as well. Winds often in from the east. That's a warm and dry spring to start us off in 1957. Our next spring is 1969. So uh, this one, quite unsettled. It has a higher pressure within the northern latitudes and lower pressure to the south winds, often in from the east during this spring. Of course, it follows a very cold February. Uh, and I think there is, you know, colder intervals through the earlier part of the spring in particular. In particular so quite a cool and wet spring there in 1969. Uh, then we've got 1981, again, following January, January CT range of uh, 4.8 5.6. This one is an unsettled spring as well, with a subly tracking jet stream. So quite a wet spring, uh, especially in uh, March and also in April, I think. Uh, quite cold as well, has a late snowstorm, late blizzard, um, in the final weekend of April 1981. Very famous, uh, very late snowstorm um, at the end of April 1981. Overall, it's a pretty cool and wet spring. Uh, then we've got 1988, which is also quite a, a cool spring. This one has below average heights to our east, some sort of above average heights out to the northwest, and winds tending to be in the northwesterly direction a lot of the time during that particular spring. But that follows a very mild winter, March of 1988, generally mild, but it does get colder, I think, into uh, April, early April 1988. It has some snow. Overall, quite a cool and uh, unsettled spring following a very mild winter. Then we've got a spring of 1994. So this one is quite unsettled with below average heights over to the north of the country, above average heights um, down to the south. So uh, this is a very Atlantic-driven spring, often quite unsettled. Um, it does have a few cold snaps in there as well, especially around Easter. Uh, which I think is in early April, if memory serves correct, of 1994. Uh, there was some snow, I remember being on the East Coast. <laughs> on the East Coast at Skegness, it was snowing on Easter Monday in uh, 1994 with my, uh, my mum and dad. Going back a few years. Uh, then we've got the spring of 1995, again, following January CT range of 4.8 to 5.6. This one 
with a mid-Atlantic ridge going up towards Greenland and a trough of below average heights, low pressure to our east. So often winds in from the north through uh, this spring. It has a cold March with some snow. Again, as far as a very mild winter, but uh, March has some cold weather in it, especially early on and then again later on in the month. Um, and there are some snowfall during March of 1995. April has a cold snap in the middle, but otherwise a very dry uh, and quite mild punk. And then May turns uh, really hot in the first week and, you know, gives a little bit of a heads up about the summer. But some of the way, there's a very hot spell during May 1995 in the first week of the month. That is a little bit of a teaser for uh, the summer to come. Uh, then we got to 1998, so this one is quite uh, a mixed spring as well, with below average heights to our east, above average heights out in the Atlantic. Winds again frequently in from a northerly direction. This has uh, a generally mild uh, March, and then a very cold and wet April. And um, by wet, I mean flooding rains uh, in April of 1998, and cold with snow at times as well and then all flips around in may of 1998 and we actually have a very warm and dry may uh with a lot of sunshine and uh you know uh classic sort of early summer month in fact the best of the extended summer really is uh, in uh, may 1998 the rest of the summer tends to go a little bit down the tube so um that's one of those uh, sp uh springs where every month is very very different very variable 1999 shows up next one in january ct of 4.8 5.6 this one looks as though it should be quite unsettled it's not overly unsettled to be honest you know um it's a relatively dry despite the blocking seal it's a relatively dryish and quite warmish uh spring although it does have some cold weather in april then we've got 2000 uh so this is quite a wet spring Below average heights tending to be to the south, above average heights out to the Atlantic, so a mid Atlantic ridge type idea. Again, March of uh, 2000, following a mild winter, generally keeps that pattern going. Has a lot of mild weather, early spring weather, uh, and then it gets really wet and cold in April of 2000, especially early on in the month. There's late season snowfalls. Uh, and then May, just very variable, very unsettled month, I think. In May 2000, heralding an unsettled summer. Uh, 2002 is our next spring with some high pressure off Scandinavia, some low pressure out to our west. So um, this spring has a lot of dry and warm weather. Winds are often in the southerly direction. Looks like it should be quite an unsettled spring, not overly unsettled. There is quite a lot of dry and warm weather to be had in uh, the spring of 2000. And two. Spring 2004 shows up next. This one with lower pressure to the south, higher pressure up towards Scandinavia. Lots of easterly winds in uh, this spring. Generally quite a warm, dry spring, but it does have some quite cold weather in, uh, in early March of uh, 2004. Then we've got spring 2012 um, with above average heights again over and to the west of the country. Um, now, this is a very variable spring. has a really dry and very mild March. Then it turns very wet and cold in April of 2012. And then May 2012, again, similar to 1998 in some ways, has like the best weather of the extended summer because the summer of 2012 is, uh, is a really bad summer. So... Um, it's uh, the best weather of, of, uh, of the year, you know, of the summer, is uh, to be found in May uh, 2012. So, again, that's a very, very strange spring with a lot of intramet variation. So, the overall analog foot season doesn't tell you everything you need to know about that season. Uh, then we've got the spring of not, uh, 2016, following January CT of 4.8 to 5.6. Uh, this one quite a lot of northern blocking uh, within high latitudes, below average heights to the south, winds in from the east. Has a notable cold spell in April of uh, 2016. That follows an exceptionally mild uh, winter and, of course, a super nino as well. Uh, and then lastly, we've got 2018. So uh, this one, of course, starts with the beach from the east in uh, March of uh, 2018. Overall, March 2018 is quite a cold and wintry month. It's the mini beach that occurs later on. But the spring itself is actually quite warm, has high pressure 
uh, to the east and low pressure is out to west. Winds frequently coming in from like a southerly or southeasterly direction once March is out of the way. So March has quite a lot of easterly winds and cold, wintry weather. But then April and, and uh, May, you know, although quite unsettled at times with, with spells of rain, also has a lot of warm weather uh, to uh, enjoy and setting up what becomes a hot summer in 2018, of course. Right, let's put all of that together then. So this is how all Marches combined are uh, looking following a January city range of 4.8 to 5.6. Quite unsettled soon. It does have a normal blocking signal, but it's more over toward the Canadian side of the Arctic, which leaves us a lot of the time looking relatively mild, but also quite unsettled. So quite a quite a mild wet sort of signal. Uh, for a lot of both marches. Bear in mind, there will be exceptions to that. So we know that, for example, we've got 2018 in the mix, which, of course, is quite a cold and wintry uh, march. But um, and we've got 995 as well, which does have some certain times. But generally, it doesn't look like a particularly cold signal. just looks like a rather unsettled and mildish sort of signal. Now, April does look like it could be set to be colder. This is how all Aprils combined are uh, looking. Very much suggesting a mid-Atlantic ridge and Greenland high type pattern with below average heights over the northwest of Europe. We're on the cold side of the jet stream um, there. So uh, a lot of those Aprils are including quite cold weather, I think, and relatively unsettled uh, a lot of those Aprils too. Again, there are going to be exceptions um, to that. So, uh, for example, we've got 2002 in there, which is a particularly cold uh, or unsettled uh, April. But, you know, there's also 1981, for example, with 2012, uh, they're, they're classic cold, 1998 as well, they're classic cold and at times quite wintry Aprils. So that gives a little bit of a warning, I think, for this spring to come. And then all Mays combined look like that, much more centred towards a Scandinavian high in the Mays, uh, with below average heights, low pressure to our south and southwest. That would leave us bringing in the wind from uh, like a easterly, south direction. Could be quite unsettled, but also a lot warmer, I think, for those uh, maids. We lose the, the northerly influence much more towards easterly type winds. And maybe even a bit volatile, maybe a bit thundery with a lot of those maids. So warm and wet, perhaps, signal for, uh, for, for the maids. And then finally, all springs combined, following a January CT range of 4.8. 5.6 we look like this so um we tend to get a chop of low pressure over and slight to the south of the country it does have a bit of a mid-atlantic ridge towards greenland but bear in mind a lot of that is down to april no we don't see that particularly in in march march is more over the canadian side of greenland and of course in uh, may it's more centered towards scandinavia with that area of high pressure so the overall spring analog i don't think tells you everything because there is a lot of instrument variation going on there within many of these springs and we're done so uh there we go that is your uh, fifth spring 2023 update um and uh, that's it so uh, we're going to be looking at more january data next week we will have england whale precipitation uh, for you uh next sunday and i think the gals will be sunny round as well by the way uh next weekend so that'll be quite an interesting watch too but yeah the uh, sixth spring update will be coming up for you next sunday looking again at uh, more uh, at more data uh for uh, for january more january data the Gaz Webby's spring forecast is going to be released at the end of this month, so we are getting ever closer towards uh, having to release the spring forecast, but we've still got a couple more updates to do uh, after this. Uh, thank you so much to uh, Richard and also to Shrine for the help on this uh, spring update. And for this spring 2023 update, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.